I bought some stuff. So before we get started, I know there's no light in the background, but I think it looks better without the light. Why don't you tell me this is without the light and this is with the light. I think the colors look better without the light, but I'll let you decide. So you just, I'll put the pictures side by side so you can see. You decide the meatball next to me, he doesn't have the light and I have the light. So you tell me which one's better. So I went to the store and I got these Masters Touch watercolor. The original price there, you can see $6.99. It's somewhere on there, right? And then it's $1.74. $1.74 per tube? I couldn't, it just doesn't matter how terrible they are. I had to try them. I have to give that a shot. Now, for some weird reason, I did not get a blue, but I did get a Payne's gray. Maybe I can make that look a little blue. I usually use the Payne's blue gray, so, but anyway, I lied. I did get a blue. I got a Prussian blue. I thought I put that back. I didn't. I actually got it. So I got seven colors. I'm going to swatch them out for you, and I'm going to use them a little bit. Let's see if they're actually worth anything. They claim to be light fest. I don't believe them, but they say there's like three stars on the back for the Prussian blue. That's always suspect. But any of the other ones, they have the four stars on. No, they this one doesn't either. That's I I might be this may be the worst review of any product you've ever seen. This one has okay, this one has four. It says it's according to the ASTM standard. So we'll see if these are actually any good. I'm going to go through them. I'm going to do a little painting with them after I swatch them out so you can see them on the paper, see how they are. But they're not dried yet, so that'll be the real test. I'll have to come back and do another one of these when their paints are dried in the pans, because that's how I usually use watercolor. And if they're hard to reactivate, then they're no good. Right now, they're just all going to be wet paint, but I will dilute them to the normal amount that I usually dilute the paint. Now, Master's Touch, if you don't know, that's the Hobby Lobby brand of paint that's not a real regular brand. I don't know who makes it for them. I don't know if they get someone like Sennelier or someone else to make their paint for them. A lot of brands do that. Like I know American Journey is actually made by Da Vinci. So if you like Da Vinci paints, you like American Journey paints. And I think they're a little bit cheaper because they're a store brand, a cheap Joe's brand, I think. I think that's it or Jerry's Artorama. I don't remember. I get them confused, but it's one of those brands, and they have DaVinci make their paint, so it could be something okay. I don't really have no idea who would make these, but these are 21 ounce tubes for $1.74. I think if anybody saw that, they'd probably buy them, even though normally they're $7. That's not really very expensive, and I'm going to be comparing these to the ones I use in Daniel Smith, so I'm going to try and pick the closest color and just compare them and see if they're somewhat decent, if they're close to it. They might not be, I don't know, and I will not be able to test the light fastness. Listen, I'm not gonna do it on a sheet and then stick it in the window for six months and see what it does. I, I've never done that with any artwork I've ever owned. I don't get a piece of artwork and say, oh wow, this would look great if I paste it in my front facing window with the sun blaring on it and that's where I put it for six months and see if it fades. Let me see if that happens. And I don't ever do that. I may put it up on a wall in a bright room, but never in direct sunlight. I wouldn't do that. I think that's a dumb test. I know people will say, oh, well, oh, look, this held up for um, six weeks or a month in the direct sunlight. I, I don't, do you do that with your other artwork? Is that what you're doing? You're putting it in direct sunlight? You deserve to have it ruined. You don't ever do that with artwork. So I'm not going to do that. But I will do it in my sketchbook. I have no problem putting this in my sketchbook. It's fine, even if it's not professional grade or whatever it is. I, I just, as long as it acts like watercolor, I'm doing okay. If it starts acting like something else, maybe it's not pigmented enough or something like that, then we'll talk about it. We'll, I'll call it out. But if it's going to work like regular watercolor, I have no problem putting this in my sketchbook. And for $1.74, I don't know how anyone can really be that pissed off, even if it didn't work. And even if it came out of the tube as a solid block or like a jelly, I, how, what can I complain about? It's $1.74. I'm going to throw them. It's $1.74. I can afford to throw them. It doesn't matter. They're fine. This is where the channel loses all credibility. I'm going to say that the most 
cheapest thing I've ever bought is going to be great and then no one will believe me and ever buy anything from my affiliate links ever again. I don't have an affiliate link from this one, I don't think. I might, you can check below, but I don't think so because it came from Hobby Lobby and I don't have an affiliate link for them. So unless it's sold also on Amazon, which I doubt, then, then maybe. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here we have the colors. We have the yellow ochre, the deep alizarin red, the violet toner. That's a weird name. I don't know. It's a PV-19 that doesn't have a lot of light fast. It's not the max light fast. I've never seen that before, but that's what we're rolling with here. Then we have the Prussian blue. I always knew that one was a little suspect, so that's not a problem. Light red, Payne's gray, ivory black. Let's see how they turn out. Now I'm going to try and just make this as much like a regular wash as I normally would I don't know if I'll be able to do that but I'm gonna try I know yellow ochre is already a little opaque yeah it's it's not you know what I don't have the dried pans so it's a little opaque and it looks a little bit weird that's okay that's not really the color I would expect from a yellow ochre and it doesn't look very concentrated now if I was going to use the Mars yellow from Daniel Smith that's that color there so and the yellow ochre is it's not that it's really off very much it's just that there's it's not as dark as I would like it's not as concentrated and this is wet paint so it should be a little bit more concentrated it's straight from the tube I don't think I can make it a little bit more concentrated yeah, make it a little bit more concentrated maybe I just washed it out a little bit too much I don't know it still doesn't look like what I would expect it to look but anyway that's the yellow ochre. You can see it went over that line there where I put it a little bit thicker. It's definitely opaque. Okay, there's deep alizarin red here. Kind of the color I would expect it to be. Yeah, I don't see a problem with that. The paint is acting a little bit strange, but it could be because of the way I'm putting it down. Like I said, like I said, it's not fresh from a dried pan. It is the wet paint, so I can actually put a little bit there and water it out a little bit. It's it's roughly what I would expect. Now that's the Pyrol Crimson that I usually use. It's a little bit more red. It's not really apples to apples because I don't have like a permanent alizarin crimson here. And I'm guessing that's what that is, the deep alizarin. It's basically a permanent alizarin crimson. It's close. I, I would expect that color from an alizarin crimson. Maybe a little bit darker though. Like I said, they're they're not as concentrated. I can try and make them more concentrated but but either way it, it's still that's not terrible that's not a terrible color this is an anthraconoid red which is a little bit more on that spectrum and you can see how close those are those are pretty close I would say that's a that's pretty pretty similar again though that just covers so much nicer and the color is so much brighter this is much more diluted and it doesn't look as it just doesn't look as nice. Even this is a darker color. It's a crimson. But it's a darker color. And it just doesn't... I don't know. This just doesn't work. But in a sketchbook, it will. It's not a problem in a sketchbook. This is violet toner, and it's not very light fast. But well, it's actually a pretty color. I, I, I didn't know what to expect from that color. Violet toner. I don't know what you think that's supposed to be. Again, I'll do it a little bit more concentrated here. And then just water it out a little bit more. It actually looks almost like an ultramarine purple. It's it's a little bit lighter. What I expected it to be was more like a perylene violet. I thought I was going to get something like this out of it. But and that's what it looks like on the that's kind of a little bit more what it looks like on the tube. You can see the tube it just it looks a little bit darker than that. That looks but it's a very nice color. It's a very pretty color. Now this Prussian blue came out very weird out of the tube, but um, that's not bad. That's a good solid blue color. I don't have a problem with that. It came out very runny in the tube though. It wasn't completely solid, but that's okay. That's that's not a bad color. I want to compare it to. So this is a thalo blue green shade. It's definitely darker than that. It's not as bright, and it does have that Prussian blue. A character where it gets a little bit darker as it dries and it just it looks a little bit stormier now this is Holbein Prussian blue and it goes on a little bit brighter 
But as they all do, when they dry, they'll get a little darker. So let's see what happens now when this one dries and see if it's as dark as it. I actually really like that color blue. It's just not very strong, but I think that's okay. It doesn't come off, like it doesn't pop off the page. But I think that's a very muted blue, and I think that's okay. Here we have some light red. And as expected, that is very dark. That That's opaque. It covers right over that line. That's watered out a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of granulation in there. It acts just like a light red wood. This is a Cotman light red. And uh, it, it's, it's, not as, it's not as concentrated. It's, it's, it's a very similar color, but it, it doesn't look as strong. This looks much stronger. I think it works a little bit better. And then when it gets watered out a little bit, it, it's a nicer color in that area. Now, I know this is not apples to apples, but this is the Indian red that I absolutely love from Daniel Smith. And it's much uh, browner of a color than the light red is. The light red is not supposed to be that dark, but it's the same pigment. And that's why I tell you all the time, you can't trust the pigment number because the pigments can come out looking more this is more like a, a violet colored brown, I guess you'd call it. And this is much more of a reddish brown color. But the light red, it's, it's a nice color. It doesn't look that bad. It, it actually looks pretty good. The thing that I do like about the Indian red is that pinkish undertone that you can just put something very light and you get that pink color. Where here, you'd have to go for more, it's more of a brownish, like a light reddish brown color. And that's fine, but when you see Next to the Cotman watercolor, it doesn't look as nice. Even if you take the area that's dried out a little bit compared to this area, or even up here, it just, this looks better. To me, it's just a preference thing, that's all. Now here's a Payne's Gray here. And that's a beautiful Payne's Gray. I don't have a problem with that at all. Let's get that a little bit more in the frame. I don't have a problem with that at all. Let's get a little bit more concentrated and then water it out. It's a beautiful bluish gray color. I think it looks very nice. If I look at the, I'd have to compare it to the Daniel Smith um, Payne's Blue Gray, which is the only one that I have. It's very similar. It's, I think just a little bit more of a shade, but I think it's very similar. And, and this one, I think it looks a little bit more blue even than the Payne's Blue Gray. That looks more of like a a greenish blue color to it and this looks more like a reddish blue color I think that's the difference and that makes sense because it has the PB 29 in it so that's going to look a little bit more red although I, I think this one does, I don't know what the pigment is in here but anyway it, it looks very similar I would not hesitate to use this in place of that if I absolutely had to if it is indeed light fast if it is I'm, I have no problem swapping those out if I have to and for $1.74 to get a huge tube of it, I, I, there's no problem with that. Okay, now here's an ivory black, and I know a lot of people do not like ivory black because of the fact that it comes from bones and something had to die. And I understand that, and so I completely understand. I don't have a problem with that. It just happens to be the only black color that they had in there. And I don't have a black. I have... Let me take that back. I do have a black. I have the lunar black from Daniel Smith. But it, it's, it's a granulating color. It looks a little bit cooler of a black. And that's what I like. So I don't really like this black. I probably will not use it. I like the cooler black. This, of course, is extremely granulating. And if I was just doing a value sketch, I'd probably pick this black because I like the way that it looks better. But really, it's not bad. It's just not very concentrated. It's not very dark. You see how dark this gets. This, even in concentrated form, it wasn't really that dark. Let me see if I put that, I mean, that's full strength out there. I guess it's pretty dark full strength. That's not a problem, but I don't know. It's just, as soon as you add a little bit of water, it gets very light. I'm not sure if I enjoy that. I definitely don't enjoy the greenish brownish undertones of the black. I like the cooler colors, so the cooler blacks for me looks a little bit nicer, although I do like the warmer yellows, so that this, again, this doesn't look that bad. It's not terrible. I'd use this in a painting 
I have no problem with this. This is a very pretty color. I don't know if it's going to last at all or if this one will last, but that's a nice color. Again, not very saturated. It doesn't pop. When you look at these next to each other, you can tell these two are professional brands and this one is not. This did not get as dark as I thought it would. This is the uh, Prussian Blue from Holbein and it did not get as dark. This got much darker and that's fine. It's, an, it's a pretty shade. It's just not as intense as I would expect for a professional grade. And it's not. It's a store brand. Uh, the light red is not bad. It, it's For a light red, that's, that's a great color. Compared to the Cotman, it's much better. I would rather use this. The Payne's Gray I have no problem with. Again, a little bit lighter. But uh, I would use it. I don't have a problem with it. And then the Ivory Black is probably one I will never use again. I just don't like the that greenish undertone that it has. It's just not my thing. That's all. It's just not my thing. It could be your thing. There's no problem with that. All right, so I'm going to do a little painting with this and see how it works out. So I did enjoy this very much. I did the same kind of sideways scribble that I was doing with the uh, Pentel pocket brush. And since it has the fibers, you run cross, uh, fast across the paper and it looks rough. It looks like a dry brush. And I absolutely love that effect. And I really didn't have a whole lot of ideas as to what I wanted to do for the composition. But I just kind of evened it out as I went and I ended up with a picture that I absolutely loved. I thought it was great. And, and I did enjoy this one a lot. I'm going to do some more of these. I, I don't know if any of you are getting sick of these, but I really like them. I think they come out really well. So in the end, you'll see that it comes out much better. In, in the beginning, it looks very rough and scribbly, but in the end, it looks good. It almost looks like I'm uh, using charcoal to just scribble something in really quick when I first put this in. And I think I like that look without all the mess. It's just a nice look, and then I can darken what I want to and develop the values how I want and leave some areas open for color, make it look great. So using the, the paints like this, I it was fine. It was absolutely fine using them in a sketchbook like this. I actually had them blend very nicely together. It was a, a pleasant experience to use these. I have them drying now in a palette so that I can just bring them back out later, try them again, and see if they're going to be that way, if they're going to be that kind of, um, you know, that muted or that dull or whatever. But it, again, in this book, it doesn't matter. And for this drawing in particular, it really doesn't matter. I think it worked out perfectly. I wouldn't want the colors any brighter, any more concentrated. And I think that's a, it's kind of a hallmark of anything that's not a professional grade, they call them professional grade watercolor, is that there's a little less pigment. But let me tell you a little story about that. Now the 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 Liquitex Basics has much less pigment than the Liquitex uh, Professional Series in the acrylic paints. Much less. It takes, you have to go over the same area multiple times, but if you know uh, Lisa from Lockery Fine Art, if you look at her art, which is absolutely amazingly beautiful, she does surreal stuff, but it's very realistic surrealism, and um, just the, she builds up her colors very slowly, and she uses the Liquitex Basics, it has less pigment in the paint, the pigment that is used is just as light fast as the professional brand, but it's used, It's just much less concentrated, so you can go layer over layer over layer. Instead of just putting like one or two layers in and being done, she could put like three, four, or five layers in and build up the same kind of color quality. And I think if you get good quality paint, you'll find that. You'll find that it's less pigmented, but as long as the pigments are just as light fast, you can build up the color. And you can do that with this stuff too. I wouldn't. Uh, you, you could with watercolor, you can go in a light wash and then go a little bit darker. And I do that sometimes with some things. But in this particular drawing, I wouldn't do that a whole lot. I went over it with a couple extra little things. But I didn't really go over the same color over and over to build it up too much. I did a little bit, but not a lot. Then I think that there's a benefit to having paint that's less pigmented. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that because then they say it's not professional. But as long as the pigment is light fast, as long as it's the same pigment that's used in the highly pigmented paint, 
as long as it's the same stuff, that's fine with me. I don't care. I don't mind putting in extra layers. I can work both ways. I can do uh, build up my layers and just get bigger and bigger with the layers and thicker and thicker and then brighter and brighter. Or I can just do it with the regular full concentration of paint and get it as bright as I want right away. It's just, I can, I'm flexible with that. It doesn't bother me to do it either way. I work the same. But some people have a real problem with that. They, they get angry almost. They're like, oh no, you can't have the paint that's, you know, less pigmented. That's, that's garbage. That's for student grade. That's, there's no such thing. Either the paint is light fast or not. If it's student grade, it's not light fast. Uh, and this, if it's student grade and you give that to someone who is a student, they'll get frustrated with it faster than anything. You use the same paint. It doesn't matter whether you consider yourself a student or I don't even know what that means. Everybody's a student. So I don't know, Matt, I don't really know what that means. You use whatever paint you have, of course, whatever you can afford. But I don't see any problem there. As long as it's light fast, I wouldn't see any problem with using this paint. I, I think it's a beautiful paint. It works fine. It is a little bit softer. It's less pigmented, but that's okay. I don't really mind it that much because of the way that I'm using it. Especially in a sketchbook, of course, I don't care. It doesn't have to be, you know, light fast to put it in a sketchbook and to do, you know, especially if I'm going to make prints with it, it doesn't have to be light fast. But um, if it was an original piece, I probably would want it to be light fast 100%. And so I might not use a couple of these colors, but the rest of them I would because they are just as light fast, they're just less pigmented. So there's a, you have to look for that. Don't just think, oh, it's it's less pigmented, it's not a good paint. That's not true. Uh, from what I understand, there are a lot of brands that are less pigmented, but they're not any worse. They're not, you have to use more paint. That's the problem with less pigmented. You've got to use more paint to get the same result. So you will spend more money eventually, or the same money at least, for getting the, the less pigmented versus the professionally pigmented stuff. But either way, it's how you like to work. I can work with both of them, so I don't really know. Let me know how you work. Do you like to build up layers, put in a soft wash, and then build up your layers? Or do you like to just go right in full strength and you've got your colors and your bam, that's it, you're done. So I do wanna say I am enjoying the new camera, this top-down view. I don't have to change the colors at all. These are true to life colors. My hand actually looks like a normal color for once. I don't look orange and I don't look pink. It's it's that's my hand. That's the color of my hand. It's that light olive color. It it works wonderfully. That's how what it looks like. So and the colors on the page, they look perfect. No color grading. I use the Cinetone for the Sony and I just changed the color in there a little bit, one up and one down. And that's it. Everything looks beautiful. I love that. On the vlog, I still have to because there's other light sources and they're different colors and things. But on the top down, I don't have to do any color grading, which means it's faster to then go ahead and record a video. I can re record it and edit it on my laptop where I don't have all the color profiles loaded in. So it's, it's wonderful. I absolutely love it and I'm having a blast with it. And as soon as this weather calms down, I'm going to be outside taking more pictures for you putting some extra stuff up on the website for you to get some reference photos or maybe just some wildlife things, little video thing and put at the end of these videos just so you can see it. But anyway, I'm just letting you know. It's, I'm having a great time. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you try this. Do one of these draw. I don't know if you're going to use the paint or not, but do one of these drawings if you have not done it yet. It is so relaxing and fun and calming. I absolutely love to do these. I highly encourage you to do them. So thumbs up the video. If you're going to go ahead and you're going to look at one of these and then you're going to go outside and find something in nature that looks like this because I have no idea what exactly this is. I, I have no idea. Maybe it's some kind of rock formation thing. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I have no idea what this is. But anyway, if you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in. You can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. Or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. 
So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.